I like the idea of improbable things, a piece of glass being improbable. There's something about it that makes it more absorbent than it is reflective or more translucent or transparent. The thing I like about glass is that it reflects light, transmits light, and absorbs light all at the same time. And you can play with those three little things very subtly and change it. And that makes the surface improbable. And, and I like that. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, something called a front surface mirror to me that was used in photography. So I went to the yellow pages of the Los Angeles phone book and looked up front surface mirrors and found a guy in Burbank. I went out to his little shop where he did this work and I said, can you make a piece of glass reflective on both sides? And he reached under the counter and put a little four inch square piece of glass down and I picked it up and it was exactly what I wanted. Then Kenny suggested I do it myself. He said, I can't imagine how much you're paying this guy. So I bought the equipment and we found a little place on the Lower East Side. He sent a guy to set it up. It was a blizzard day in New York when he came and visited my new little studio with the equipment in it set up. And he says, yeah, 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 yeah this will do very nice. And I said, okay, well, wh when do I get my first lesson on how to use this? And he says, right now. And he reached into his overcoat and pulled out a book called Vacuum Deposition of Thin Films. Sort of stuck it in my stomach and said, you start on page one, and he left. And here I am with this book, which I couldn't imagine what this meant. And this is a piece of equipment that I had no idea what it was. He called me two days later saying, don't be mad at me. New York can be very hard on people that are as positive as you. <laughs> he would explain to me well, how the equipment worked, refer me to the book, what page this valve meant, what it's doing and so on. It was totally mechanical. All the valves had to be opened by hand and closed by hand. And, and there's a procedure in the pumping system that you had to follow or else it didn't work. I learned all of that kind of stuff and the ritual of it all was just absolutely riveting to me. I was just enchanted by it all. You know, it was a whole other world of things I'd never even known anything about. It was wonderful, it was incredible. This is a, a, a tantalum container that can take tremendous amount of heat and the material when it's inside, uh, when it gets hot enough, it, it sublimates. It never becomes a liquid. It evaporates as a solid. What's called fixturing is the stuff that goes inside that big tank. It is endlessly versatile because there's an endless number of things that I can treat in it that change the, what it does when it gets out of there. So it's up to me to figure out what to do with this changed stuff. The size of the parts that I was going to use to make my sculpture is what determined the size of the tank. Parts couldn't be wider than I could reach this way, no taller than I could jump and touch, and not be heavier than what I could grunt up off of the floor by myself. The old tank is now 53 years old and operating as it was new, and we're constantly renovating it to make it more efficient. 
basically all this system is, it's a big bottle that we can pull the air out of. And there are things that can be done in an environment that contains no air that can't be done in the presence of air. The process allows the material that's evaporated to keep its natural crystalline structure that give it its optical qualities. It's the same optical qualities as a thin film that it was as a solid. It's also possible to change those optical qualities by layering various films together and doing the plating in various reactive gases that change the molecular structure. It looks different, in other words. If something is so exotic that I can't play with it, then I don't want to mess with it. It's not a challenge, you know. <laughs> it's not a boxing match with materials. I'm just looking for a flow of energy transference. From the energy that makes me work has to flow out and create evidence of that flow. You know, I don't know whether it's art or not. I only know that it's evidence that art has, has influenced me. It's, it's going to take a long time for whatever it is that I've done to either prove itself as being art or not. The transparent material became very important to me because if it was thick enough, it would interfere with the light at various wavelengths, the wavelengths that were equivalent to its thickness. In other words, you could get color out of this stuff, uh, but not color from the natural color of the material being evaporated onto the surface, but from the thickness of that material. If it was equivalent to the wavelength of where the, a particular color exists in the spectrum, it would interfere with that wavelength and you would see green at mid-spectrum and blue at, as you get closer to the ultraviolet, red and the other way and so on. I make these things experimentally. I don't strive for anything other than a clear statement out of the work. And all these cubes that are behind me are kind of space stations in, in the sense that, the, that whatever's happening on the surface or within the container is light and space. In my case, I am more of a weight and mass artist than I am a light and space artist, although the works contain light and space. Interested in doing something that nobody else was doing, using techniques that nobody else was using, using materials that were readily available everywhere and using them improbably. And for my use, it can be made to do all the things that I want to do. So it's a perfect material for, uh, for the kind of stuff that I was interested in, in exploring. I count on spontaneity, I count on improvisation, and I count on intuition, and I trust myself. And those are the tools that guide everything I do in this media. And that's not any different, I don't think, than a, somebody with oil paint or some, all of that stuff still has to apply, and the key one is trust. You have to trust where you're going and where you're coming from, and if you do that, if you have the trust, it's your intuition and your spontaneity and your improvisation will do the rest. <laughs>